All right, folks, welcome back. Part two, three, four, three, two, part two of the Fender install. Let me turn the camera around and we'll get to it. All right, so as important as getting this thing placed is correct, um, I was able to borrow some wheels off of Clifford. Offset's totally not even close. So I'm having to space these things out to get them as close as I can because this is 11 inch wheel with a 315 3018s. So because the offset was so jacked, I had to purchase some spacers and then I had to do a little bit of ingenuity here, backyard ingenuity, and I'm holding these off an inch and a half plus the inch and a half spacer gives me a three inch. I've got to do some math for the rotor hat. Anyways, I'm going to move this in and out, but both wheels are set up right now with approximately four and three quarter or four, yeah, four and three quarter uh, back spacing and one wheel to the other left to right sit differently in the opening. So that's, that's uh, gonna, that's cause for an, investigation even more so so that's the current situation with the wheels but i have enough uh, i have a good enough setup now to where i can adjust everything um, where i want it okay so this is what it looks like when you cut the rear fender off of your 68 to 72 73 corvette all right um so <clears throat> i am saving all of the marker lights. This is gonna be a true 72. With the side vents, marker lights are all gonna be 72, just flared. So I put a little bit of heat on this. You can see most of the fiberglass came off the binding strip. And this was just me. I didn't even put heat on this. You can see I put a little heat on here. That transferred through the actual fender. Anyways, this is all uh, panel bond or whatever they used. So that'll all go down, um, get cleaned up. I'll have to put an extension on here, which I was told. So um, the good news is, is that the way that they sell these, the way that Josh sells these, there's enough material on that fender that if I need to, I can use that material or I can just come back with a uh, new mat and um, figure that out. So not a big deal, but that's the inside of the fender another example of how bad rust was anyways uh get this cleaned up and i'll start fitting the new fender all right well i know i didn't really show you much about how i clean it up i mean it's basically a three inch uh little pneumatic grinder with a uh, little uh abrasive um pad on there and just took all that material away you can see um, quite a bit of material, took it away. If you look closely, you can see right here, this is, with that little lines coming through, I don't even know. You can see this is, um, that little line there, this is all filler. That's all the epoxy, original epoxy. I probably need to take that out because it's, I mean, that's, I don't, that's cracking. Like it's clearly, you know through age you can even see it here so this line right here like anyways that all needs to come out i need to re you know basically ensure that this isn't going to come back after i do body work so i'm not sure exactly how i'm going to address this um i may end up grinding this all out and laying in mat i think that's probably the wise thing to do and then here i just got a bonding strip behind here and i just put screws through there to to suck these two together so all that's legit. Wheel pretty much centered in the opening. Um, I've got a ton of work I have to do on this jam. You can see here, when I put all this together, this is why panel fit is so important. It's my first time doing this, so um, <clears throat> it is not perfect. There's a bonding strip behind here, but I actually, this rocker cover was pushed forward just a little too much. I instead insisted on having this reveal so i actually had to pull this whole piece up a little bit which changed the angle because i didn't have the doors on changed the angle of the uh, of the jam so clearly my door during fitment was hitting the jam 
right? And then, I know this is a lot, hard to tell, but the, you know, I've got four shims. And this, this door is shimmed out a lot. And it's a little high here, but the alternative, if I take a shim out of the bottom of that door, that uh, hinge, it's gonna rotate the door down and push me further into the jam on the backside. So this is all just gonna have to get fiberglass and I'm gonna have to clean all this up when I start um, laying everything in. So, but this is this is about 95% final fitment, 90% final fitment. I'm gonna take some dimensions from the top of the body line to the bottom of the fender when I start fitting the other side to make sure they're, um, they're the same. This fender actually probably could come up just a little bit to ensure that these two body lines are a little bit better. But there's so much fiberglass work that's gonna be done here that I'm not losing too much sleep, right? At the end of the day, this thing's gonna be driven. It's gonna be beat on. Uh, and as much as I want it to look nice, I just, the, the reason I'm doing this is I don't want to lose sleep over how perfect this car needs to be. So clearly you can tell that's not going to be the case <laughs> given kind of where I'm at already. So that's it for the fitment on this. On the fitment on the front fender, I did the same thing. I cleaned all these up. I got this lowered down. Um, and um, you can see here that these don't line up. And uh, there's a pretty big gap there. So this is a 12 inch wheel and I'm half tempted to make this thing fit, uh, which means I'll have to rework this opening and bring this out. So on turn in, the wheel doesn't bind. So um, I'm debating that right now as far as fitment and uh, wheel selection and stuff like that. As you can see on the back, um, that wheel could come out just a touch and that fender could get trimmed, that lip could be, get trimmed a little bit more. So there's a few different ways to do this as far as how you want your car to, to sit on the ground or as far as your stance set up. But uh, I'm right in that process of dialing all that in. So we'll go ahead and get started and you guys can watch the process as far as how I cut out the, uh, the driver's side next and uh, we'll get back to work. trying to do is I was trying to go until I saw fiberglass so you can see the strands try to make sure you get all the way down and then I will try to remove as much of that bonding material um, I don't know how important it is I just I definitely want to make sure whatever I'm putting in here is new and is adhering to like as much of a solid structure as I can as far as the bonding strip is concerned and then um, I want to make sure that this doesn't, that this is solid too at this, um, at this corner, just because I don't want to have it. Like if you, you can't see it, but this is cracked up all the way through here. So I'm probably going to take all this out and just lay, lay fiberglass in just to make sure I don't have any issues um, after the fact. So anyways, let's get this thing peeled off. So all of the fenders are officially removed. All right, so all I'm doing is, this is where my um, cut is. My rough cut is literally just so I can mount this thing where I want it, center it, the tire and the wheel well, and then I'll come back and I'll trim it up and fit it. So right now I just kind of ran a, a line probably a half three quarter inch from the bottom actually I probably should come up a little higher but um, 
I've gone underneath and I'll cut the other side. I'll cut this from the back side. So that's the plan. All right. <laughs> So what do I want to achieve right now? I want to get it is, I guess, I want to get the wheel centered in the, in the opening, put a couple of uh, self tappers in to hold it in place, and then just check fitment and see what my challenges are as far as the door jam, as far as wheel placement, as far as the bonding strip, all that kind of stuff. So let me hang it. So I want to look at the body line. The shell will fit over, I, I cut it long so that I could make sure that the, the body line is flush and that there's no, oh, just that it's in line, right? So it's a little difficult because you want to get both lined up. Um, like that would tell me I mean, that right there is where the body line wants to naturally fit. That clearly isn't gonna work. Like if I sit flush, that's not gonna fly. So what's the next closest? I mean, it's not, we're not in dire straits here to make sure it's exactly flush, but the wheel opening is the most important. This was where I had it set, this line, right? So I gotta get that close. So I can always gauge myself on the back of the fender at the bottom, if it lines up with the existing fender at the bottom. So I know whether I'm, you know, cocked one way or the other. Let's try to work the best I can. Looks like it needs to come back, so. Wish I had a little bit more room, but I am grateful for what I have, because most people don't. not centered. Mm -mm. Nope. Oh, what a mess. All right. All right. All the fenders are on. They're prepped and fit where I think they should be. The dimensions from the top of the fender to the actual flare are consistent on all four corners. Front to back, top to bottom, these will fit the best I can get them. So the plan now is to take the car to my buddy Dave Wentworth's shop, SPS, and have him balance it. And <clears throat> so he'll corner balance it and he'll, um, we'll just ride height and we'll, uh, we'll align the car. And prior to that, I will do my best. I'll take the fixtures off, put the JRIs back on it. I'll adjust ride height to what I think it should be, what looks best. And that way, when I show up there, when I, when he goes through the process, whatever he has to adjust out, left, right, you know, front, back, whatever. If there's anything crazy going on, I'm going to know about it with the frame. So I'm still kind of battling the, the suspicions of, how bad, uh, if there's anything really, really crazy going on with this frame. Most of the guys that my buddies tell me, like, just get a new frame. I'm not quite there yet. I've put a lot of work into the car. I need to see if it's even necessary before I do this. Because that's another 1500 bucks plus, you know, whatever I have to do to go get it. And a lot of work. So anyways, before I make that commitment, I want to make sure this is not salvageable. 
So that's the plan. I'll set it up the best I can and I'll take it to his shop. When he's done, the final product is gonna tell me, you know, hey, I'm three inches high versus this corner, blah, blah, blah. So it's really gonna tell me how out of whack it is, if it's out of whack at all, right? Also, I'm gonna load the car up. I'm gonna put some weight in the front. I'm gonna put my seats in, steering column, steering parts, all that stuff to try to mimic as much of the, the final weight as I can. So he'll put me in there at 200, 225, right? In the driver's seat, it'll be correct. So that's the plan. And I need to get on a schedule as soon as possible because I know the guy's busy. But anyways, um, moving on. All right, folks. <clears throat> so a little tip from a novice like myself, figuring this all out. If you go, uh, if, if you like buying quality American made stuff, um, I totally understand. If you are trying to be frugal with your money like me, then you'll have to compromise. So um, go on eBay and believe it or not, this might actually all be made in America. Oh, that's a lie. I'm pretty damn sure that this says <laughs> Taiwan. <laughs> so anyways, um, get you some Clecos right now. I have to piece this lower fender back together. And I'm telling you right now, um, I wouldn't be able to do it without, um, without Clecos. So, um, invest believe it or not 25 uh 3 16 and 25 eighth inch clicos 50 pieces plus the pliers 49.99 on ebay um that's like can't lose gotta get some all right so if you have clicos you can do this should you do this probably not you should probably not cut it into pieces to begin with but if you do, with all the off fall from cutting these fenders up, you, uh, you can use it as bonding strips or use it just to help kind of piece this all together. And uh, it's not all finished up, but it certainly looks a hell of a lot better than the other one. But this still needs to get trimmed up based on how I'm gonna fit these wheels. But uh, in a nutshell, all right, folks. Well, that is it for this video. Uh, it's a little bit longer, but it's pretty much the main install of these flares. Um, based on a novice trying to figure it out based on my limited experience, right? But anyways, I've hoped that it helps somebody, uh, whether it's getting the courage to cut up their old classic car or, or you know, taking the jump to, to put flares on their car. Um, I know for me, it's, you know, taking the first step of just picking up the tools is sometimes the hardest part. But once you get into it, it's, you know, it's just nuts and bolts, right? So, um, yeah, appreciate everybody watching. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, subscribe. I've got some more stuff coming. I'm just going to keep plugging away on this thing, get it on the road. So appreciate everybody watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next week.